Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Glory career mode with St. Pauli. This is episode number 42 and I started today's episode off by showing you the poll results I got in the last episode when I asked you guys where you think we'll end up finishing in our second season in the Bundesliga. Most of you guys seem to agree with me between second and fourth place in the Champions League spot. 67% of you said we'll finish between second and fourth. However, 27% of you do believe we may end up winning the championship come the end of the season and I did briefly touch on it in the last episode right now with us playing so well that is a definite possibility you know it may have seemed unlikely starting the season but our start has been so impressive we've looked so good to begin season three Champions, champions of the Bundesliga, St. Pauli champions in just our second season in the top tier of German football. That is possible, believe me, and, uh, and certainly something we can achieve. But again, it is still going to be a very hard thing to do, and that's why I'm not surprised 67% of you do believe we will probably finish in second to fourth place, which will still be a very successful season. But still, coming to the first game of today's episode here, on the back of our 1 0 defeat to Hoffenheim away from home in the Deutsche Pokal round of 32 stage, we will take on Hertha. Berlin away at the Olympia Stadion in Berlin. And I'm always super excited to play away at Hertha Berlin because they have this stadium, the, the real stadium, the Olympia Stadion. And I did my Hertha Berlin career back in FIFA 14. A big reason was because of this stadium. I don't know why. It's just such a unique one in the game and uh, a really awesome stadium to play at. But uh, still, it was uh, Hertha Berlin away from home. They've not started the season off quite so well, but us right now in second place, only behind Leverkusen by a point. And just a point in this game will send us back to top of the table on goal difference but we wanted all three and our first win in a few games after three games without one and what a start to the game as well because just six minutes in we would indeed open the scoring Yusuf Paulson playing through Tony Valena who went for goal had his shot blocked initially but it came straight back to him and he nodded it past the goalkeeper Jarstein and into the back of the net to score his first goal in a St. Pauli show or is his second goal actually it might be second goal now but uh, it's his first league goal regardless and Valena puts us in front just seven minutes in. The perfect start. The way we start games this season is one big reason as to why right now we are going to need to go back to top of the table. We start games on the front foot. It doesn't take us long to get going. And after opening the scoring in the seventh minute, we had a great chance five minutes later. Valena's pass deflected off Chicharetti, but straight through to Victor Andrade. And Andrade, one of our players of the season last year, doubles our advantage just 13 minutes in. And the crowd here at the Olympia Stadium just looked completely shell-shocked. I mean, they were 2-0 down, and already we were looking to tear her to Berlin apart 15 minutes in every single time we went forward, and it was a case of how many goals we were going to score in this game, not whether we'd win the game or not, or so it seemed just 15 minutes in, because we, we were just on fire. I mean, it is the St. Pauli way. All that attack from the first whistle, it doesn't take us half an hour to get started. We're bang, right at them straight away, and that's why we were two goals up and already cruising inside the first 15 minutes. Thomas Nasheed had a good chance to try and get Herder back in the game there, but his shot went just wide the post. However, 39 minutes into the game and six minutes before the break, Herter would re uh, reduce the deficit and half it and make it 2-1 the scoreline. Thomas Nasheed heading in what was a brilliant cross from the right-hand side. This was unbelievable. What a whip ball to the back stick there. De Litt couldn't get back on time and the Czech Republic striker with a wonderful little diving head, a great leap and a fantastic technique, headed the ball in at the near post and made it Herder Berlin 1, St. Pauli too. So at the break, we were still in the lead by a goal, but Hertha had half the deficit, which meant going into the second half, I was hoping we'd start off like we did in the first half, trying to get ourselves a goal and get ourselves a really quick one at that. However, as you can see, just five minutes after the restart, Hertha would come back from two goals down to equalise and make it 2-2. And the guy that got the goal again was the guy that was causing me problems on the defensive end all game long, the sheath. However, I will say this, I don't know what on earth happened with Matthias De Ligt. The shot came in, Leno made the save, I tried to clear it, pressed the circle button, but De Ligt's clearance was just awful. He shanked it, it went sky high up in the air, and uh, unfortunately we just couldn't get the danger clear, and eventually the second shot by Manishid uh, couldn't be stopped by Leno, and went into the back of the net. So 2-2, Hertha almost won the game later on, that strike from distance hitting the top of the crossbar and going behind for a goal kick, but it was how the game would finish in Berlin. Hertha 2, St. Pauli 2, 
We do go back to the top of the table by goal difference against Leverkusen, but this was a big throwaway, man. Two points thrown away here at the Olympia Stadion. and we should have won this game when leading by two to, to throw it away. A big disappointment, and it's now no wins in our last four games in all competitions. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still been a very good start. We're still top of the table. We may have exited Deutsche Pokal. We don't care about that. We're still in second place in the Europa League group stage right now as we head into the fourth game of the group stage away in Greece to take on Olympiacos. But those sort of games right there, I mean, you're not going to win the championship if you throw those sort of games away, man. We were two goals up, 15 minutes in against Hertha Berlin away. It wasn't Bayern Munich at the Allianz Arena or Dortmund at the Signal Aduna Park. Hertha Berlin at Olympia Stadion, they're a decent team. But if we want to be champions, we need to make sure we don't take our foot off the gas pedal and simply put, tear them to shreds like we were doing in the first quarter of an hour for the entire game and make sure we get those three points signed, sealed and delivered. So I was really frustrated after that game there to throw away two crucial points. But we had to put it to the back of our minds going into the second game of today's episode. Away in Greece, taking on Olympiakos. This the fourth game of the group stage. Right now, us and Benfica both top with six points. Olympiakos in third with three. And unfortunately for us, just 19 minutes in, we will get off to the worst possible start. And the goal was coming as well, because unlike that game against Herder Berlin, we didn't start the first half strong whatsoever. Instead, the hosts look a lot stronger than us. They drilled it across from the right-hand side in the centre, Kareem and Sarifad got on to the end of it and slotted the ball past Leno and into the back of the net. Olympiakos won, St. Pauli nil, and we could have been on course for no wins in five games now. A really, really poor start. So we had to try and respond. 24th minute, Philip Billing, the great Dane, testing the goalkeeper for the first time, but he turned the shot behind for a corner. From that corner, Kakas' first delivery was stopped. The second one was better. He picked out Kikuta Mane at the far post with his header, rattled the woodwork and was eventually cleared by the Greeks. So still Olympiakos won St. Pauli nil. We were getting ourselves back into the game though and we responded really strongly after conceding that goal. We didn't sit back and feel sorry for ourselves. We tried to drag ourselves back on level terms and with four minutes to go before the break a lovely through ball saw Mane cut inside from the left and finesse the ball into the back of the net and make it Olympiakos won. St. Pauli won as he tells the visiting fans to calm down because he's got this and Keikuta Mane may not be a first team player anymore in the first 11 all the time but when he does play he plays very well he's one of those squad players I have them in every single career but I'm sure you guys as well that they may not be a first team player but when they play they will always put in a good shift already two goals in four Europa League games he is looking like the star of our European campaign so far so Olympiakos won St. Pauli won Kaka almost scored a lovely free kick on the stroke of half time that one going into the side netting though and behind for a goal kick I am so bad at free kicks in this year's fever and it was still 1-1 but four minutes after the restart a great chance for us to go in front for the first time in the game and turn the game on its head like Benfica did to us in our last Europa League game Davy Selka went down the right hand side tried to drill it across to the centre but Della Bella took him down definite penalty as there was contact with the man but none with the ball and that meant that the guy that was fouled and won us the penalty had the chance to score from the spot and put us in front for the first time in a crucial Europa League game here on Thursday night in Greece Selka stood up to take it, adjusted his run up, went to the right hand side and smashed it in to the top corner. I said Mane was the star of our European campaign so far. Well, this guy is making a claim to be the star himself. It's now his third goal in the Europa League. Davy Selka has been a really smart signing to begin this year off. It was sad to see Buhadus go after two solid years of service at the Milan Tour under my management. But I tell you what, what a decision to bring. Selka to the Milan Tour. He's been fantastic in the Europa League. Three goals already and that one, the most important one so far. So Olympiakos won at St. Pauli 2. We tried to get ourselves a two-goal cushion like we had against Herder Berlin in the second half as well after scoring that goal to get in front. That shot well saved with the goalkeeper and it was still 2-1. With eight minutes to go to a great ball by Kala off the bench. Released Thomas Olivier, a man going through 1-1. -on -one. I tried to put the goalkeeper off. Instead I put myself off. Capino made the save and turned it behind for a corner. But it was how the game would finish. It wouldn't matter in the end final score, Olympiakos 1, St. Pauli 2, a huge result here away in Greece and that puts us now almost guaranteed into the knockout stages you'll see the group table come the end of the episode, Benfica beat Norwich Jalan as you would expect and that means right now Benfica are top, St. Pauli are in second, we both have 9 points and Olympiakos and Norwich Jalan are in 3rd and 4th respectively with 3, so yeah, it's basically done, bar a complete 
meltdown and something happening which is, you know, so unlikely. I don't think they take uh, odds in that in Vegas. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure both us and Benfica are heading into the Europa League knockout stages, even with two games to go. One point for both teams, that will guarantee it. And maybe we'll play for that in the, uh, the, the uh, sixth and final game. I guess we'll have to wait and see just to guarantee it. But uh, still, for the third and final game of today's episode here, we will take on Schalke at the Milan Tour. Coming into this game of the Bundesliga in a crucial second versus third clash with both teams desperately needing a win in a very congested top of the table. A win in this game will see us move back into first position and overtake Leverkusen, but a loss here in Hamburg and we could fall to as low as fourth. If either team want to be crowned champions come the end of the season, then this is the game to prove it. What a clash we have here at the Milan Tour as we take on the lads from the Veltins Arena. Come on St. Pauli, let's pick up a massive victory in our pursuit to be crowned champions come the end of the season. So huge battle here at the Milan Tour between two teams who have started the season off very, very strong. And I think both teams in the back of their mind do know that they're going to be underdogs to win the title. Because even though Bayern are below both of us, they are still the strongest team in Germany. But I, I just, I think it is a possibility this year. You know, we talked about it at the start of the episode. I think it is a possibility. But these are the games where we have to come through and win. Not just draw, if we are to pick up a championship in just our second season in the top flight. Otherwise, we're going to have to settle for top four. You know, if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. And right now, Schalke are one of the best. So come on, St. Pauli. Let's get a big win here. One off. One of the best. As Andrade goes down the right-hand side, drills one into the centre. And Paulson, oh, Paulson beat Farman to the ball. But the goalkeeper just got a little nick on it. And it goes behind for a corner. Yusuf Paulson has not scored in quite a few games despite a very encouraging start. Almost put us 1-0 up there. Very important. Slight touch by the goalkeeper. Geis for Schalke. Finds Luis Gustavo. And the Brazilian plays it inside towards Mbola. Now Maximilian Maia receives the ball. And Schalke look for their first chance of the game. Maia still on the ball. Floats onto the back stick. And Chupo Moting has headed Schalke in front. 1-0 to the visitors. One chance. One goal. And a guy that was rubbish for me in my Torino career mode back in FIFA 15 has come back to haunt me. He's beat his man at the back stick there. Was that Moses? I think it was going off for the header. And it goes into the bottom corner. And Schalke have taken the lead. Big goal and a big blow for us. Actually, it was Andrade, not, uh, not Moses, that lost out in the air there. I mean, neither are particularly tall. And it makes no difference now anyway. Still trailing by one. This is worrying, man. This is really worrying. Because these are the games, again, we need to win these games. And right now we're losing. And uh, it, it's not been a good start. But here's Andrade down the right. Trying to make amends here for losing out in the air. Tries to come inside and find some space. He's got Valena with him. I'll give it to him. Space opens up for Tony Valena. And the shot goes just over the bar. Good chance, that. Very good chance. I probably should have taken the ball inside a couple more yards there. I just thought I've got to get a shot away. I don't want to miss out on uh, and striking a, an easy shot of goal with no white shirts in front of us. Still trailing by a goal. We have actually started off better in this game. That is an encouraging sign, but we need to find a goal and get back on double terms. And it's Clivert on the ball, and Clivert's inside. That's a penalty. That's a penalty every day of the week. Clivert taken down. Was that Pacini? I think it was. And Justin Clivert wins a spot kick, and it's a red card as well. A red card for Pacini. I must say, I'm not sure that foul warrants a red card, because it was bad, it was late, it was from behind, and he was running through one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, now I'm listing all the reasons why it should be a red card, but I guess, I. oh well, I mean, it is late, it is from behind. He doesn't get anywhere near the ball. I can see why the referee's given it. Rodolfo missed the last penalty he took. Can he make amends here? Going to the top left. Last time he missed this way. But this time, Rodolfo the ball gets his uh, penalty right. Puts it in. Sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And we are back on level terms. El Toro this time is perfect. It's 1-1. Shall go down to 10. And hopefully now we can flip the scoreline just like we did away in Greece. El Toro sends Farmer the wrong way. It is some Powerly one, Schalke one. Now we've got the man advantage and the equalising goal. Let's find a goal to go in front. That's a terrible pass now. A good chance here of Rodolfo finding Paulson. Paulson to Schicciaretti. The Italian who has his man on his heels. Oh, Schicciaretti's inside. Wonderful work from Schicciaretti. But Farman makes a brilliant save. And Chupo Moting can't prevent the corner. Still 1-1. Excellent work once again by the Italian. And El Toro hits the bar from the corner. And then Farman dives in the rebound. But it's another penalty. What drama here in the middle until Farman got to the ball. But only through taking a man down, the referee, he's not even going to book Farman. 
And, well, what an extraordinary sequence of events here. And, and well, Valena was taken down when Farman won the ball. Was that a penalty? I mean, he got to the ball by taking down Valena. But, um, I mean, that is, well... I mean, well, what can you say about that? Huge controversy here at the Militor. Second penalty awarded in just 10 minutes. Well, five minutes, really. And a chance here to make it 2-1. Once again, we're going to the top left. It's El Toro once more. And, oh, well, how about that from El Toro? Farman rooted to the spot. But it wouldn't have made the slightest bit of difference if he went for the ball because he was getting nowhere near that one. Same celebration. Same spot kick side. Same result. St. Pauli 2, Schalke 1, and El Toro. What a penalty that was. He missed his last one coming into this game. He's now scored two in five minutes and there is no stopping that one. St. Pauli 2, Schalke 1 and the ball has done it again. Right, the lads from Gelson Kirk and trying to get themselves back in the game despite having the man disadvantage and they're looking strong here. Guys on the ball rolls it inside and oh Luis Gustavo was unmarked in the area and the Brazilian knows that was a golden opportunity to put Schalke back on level terms. He smacks the post and it goes behind for a goal kick. They may have a man disadvantage. We may still be up by a goal, but don't think this game is done yet. Schalke are in third place and in third for a reason. They've been one of the strongest sides to start this season off. And there is a reason for that being the case. Still 2-1, but uh, this game far from over. As Meyer's on the ball, tries to come inside. Great work from Maximilian Meyer, but the shot was easy for Leno to save. Yeah, this game is far from done, man. Still 2-1, but uh, there's surely going to be more twists in this tale. It's Ben Taleb, and Ben Taleb still on the ball for Schalke. And the Algerian midfielder keeps on going. And Valena eventually puts a stop to that and says, give me that ball right now, son. And now is a chance on the break. Moses receives the ball, and the engine plays through Paulson. No goals in a few games. How about now? How about now? Use of Paulson coming inside, and Farmer makes the save. It'll drop to El Toro. Can he find some shooting space? No, he's tackled. And Kalazinac clears that could have and possibly should have been 3-1. And the game secured. He's in Bola down the right for Schalke. They're not giving up yet. Cross of the centre is cleared by Matthias De Litt as uh, Bentaleb wins the aerial duel between him and Chicharetti. Chupo Moting now on the ball. Game far from over. Shot comes in. Leno makes a really important save at his near post. Still 2-1. But again, this, this game is far from over, man. 60 minutes to go, and we are hanging on in there right now. And there it is. It's all over at the Millen Tour. We hang on for the three points. St. Pauli 2, Schalke 1. There's a doppelganger for you. It was a really, really crazy first half, though. We trailed through Jupo Moting, but then two controversial decisions. First to award a penalty and send off Pacini. And then the second penalty, a very bizarre one, as Farman was penalised. Saw that man there, El Toro, bag a brace from the spot as we turn the game on its head and collect a massive, massive victory. I must say, I don't think the stats truly reflect what happened in this game at all. I thought Schalke played just as good as us in this one, despite the stats suggesting we were quite dominant. But we did get the win by two goals to one. Two penalties scored by El Toro. Let me know in the comment section down below whether you think the referee got those penalty decisions right. Firstly, should it have been a red car for Pacini? And secondly, was the second penalty a penalty? The first one definitely was. The second one, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Should it have been a red car for the right back? And should Schalke have had a second penalty given against them? Uh, but uh, man, the match for me, I think it does have to go to El Toro. Bagging a brace, scoring both penalties. He missed the last one he took came into the, coming into this game. That was against Bayern Munich. But this time, ice in his veins, converts both, and it's a big, big win for St. Pauli that surely takes us back to top of the table. Massive three points. And that will end today's episode of our Road to Glory career mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, then please do consider leaving a like, as likes are, of course, very much appreciated, and they really help the channel out as well. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic bank holiday Monday, and I'll see you for the next episode of our RTG career mode with St. Pauli very soon.